Welcome back everybody to Desktop Inventions. Now today we're going to be going over a complete printer head upgrade on the Ender 3 V2. So we have a Dragonfly hot end, an Orbiter V2 extruder, and a few more tricks up our sleeve. Like this color changing fan and my first blower design, which looks like a V8 engine with a blower on top. So a bit of backstory here, when I got this new hot end and extruder, I wanted to combine them with the Noctua fan to make an all-in-one printer head design. And unfortunately, looking on Thingiverse, I was unable to find such a thing. So I decided to take the previous version I'd been using and start from that as a baseline and create my own printer head design. And this is my story. So here's the first version here, fresh off the printer. So let's get it depaneled and do some testing. And first we'll be doing the water cup test, and this is pretty simple. We just put the printer head over a cup of water and look for this little dimple to show the air path going across the nozzle. And now let's try this test on version 1, and we've got nothing, not even a dent. I concluded this was due to the vent opening being located too high in the nozzle, so I decided to adjust this for the next design. So here is version 2, assembled with the Dragonfly hot end and our color changing fan in the front here. So we're going to try the water cup test again and see if it can pass this time. And now we can clearly see the dent in the water cup, so we're making forward progress. And now with the orbiter extruder assembled on top, let's see how much this whole thing weighs. About 270 grams. Next I was going to mount this onto the printer frame, but turns out there was some interference between the orbiter extruder and the printing frame, so I'll have to redesign that and get that fixed for version 3. I think this one's gonna work. So we're gonna dismantle this and there's no turning back. We're gonna get all this ripped apart and we're gonna figure out how to make this work one way or another. So let's go. Now before we say goodbye forever, let's see how much the original setup weighs. And now for the big stepper motor. All right, now that version three is up and running, let's look at some printing tests. So first off here, we have the bridging test. Looks pretty good, no uh, strands hanging down. 
Next up we had the overhang test from 30 degrees to 75 degrees. This one's also looking pretty good. Uh, it is struggling a little bit past 60 degrees, so that gets a little bit shaky there. Not so bad. And then, last but not least, the bolt test. Wait, what? Is this the same printer? This test looks horrible. So what's happening here is during the print, uh, the edges of the bowl are curling up, which is causing it to be higher than it should be. And then the printer, printer nozzle is digging into the material here, which is causing these deep trenches. So basically what that means is the part cooling is not good enough. So we're gonna make some adjustments on version four and see if we can't fix this. All right, here's version four. It's a little bit wider than the version three, and we're gonna try the Noctua 4020 fans this time and see if we can't pass the bowl test. So let's get it assembled. All right, let's look at version four now and the bowl printing test. We can see at the rear of the part here, this part actually got a little bit smoother. We don't have as much trenches there like we did on this print. Um, and then on the front side, we have this big ugly eyesore here. That was actually due to the bottom of the print head here catching as it was printing. Overall, it's not great, so we're gonna have to do a lot more work to improve this. So let's get on to version five. And on version five here, we've adjusted the fan angle, which made the whole printing head wider, as you can see on the right side, but there is a much more straight shot from the fan to the outlet. All right, it's a new day and we have a new printing head. This one is version five, I believe. So version four was printing this one out. So hopefully we can uh, increase the airflow and get um, more airflow past the nozzle. See if that solves our printing issue. All right, let's look at version five. So right away we can see this one broke, taking off the printer. Those layer lines are obviously not very strong. Um, we did fix this big issue. So the uh, fan duct is not scraping on the part anymore but we still do have a severe curling on the part. So again, we're gonna have to redesign for version six and we'll make some changes to the fan duct and hopefully improve this. And here we are, version five printer head here. The V8 inspired with the nice supercharger on top there. It's actually printing out version six on the printer bed because the fan duct design is not good. Because of that, we have a little helper fan over here it's trying to help the part cooling since the fan duct is not working so well. Version 6 update here. So in the previous version 5, we were pointing the fan duct right at the nozzle. And now in version 6, we're going to point the fan duct right below the nozzle where the filament comes out. All right, version 6 bowl test here. It's actually looking a lot better than version 5. You can see actually on the rear side of the part, this is looking a lot more smooth, still not great. And the front side is a bit worse. We still have this trenching going on, but significantly better than version five. So the uh, adjusted fan ducts has definitely helped things, but we'll have to take it to the next step to get even better. Let's compare version six and version seven here. On version seven, I've opened up this fan duct a little bit more as compared to version six. Let's look at version seven bowl test here. Um, pretty similar to version six. Although the front of the part did get a little bit smoother, this trench here is a little bit better. Still have a little ways to go. So let's pull out some magic for version 8. Looking at the cross section of version 8 here, I did smooth out the fan ducts just a little bit more, but that's not the only change I made. Alright, version 7 and version 8 here. Let me uh, demonstrate one issue I found with version 7. So when the fan is mounted here, we have a pretty steep wall here. And as the fan blows air in, it's pushing the air towards the rear of the nozzle. So the front of the nozzle is not getting good cooling. And I can demonstrate that with this piece of filament here. So if I stick this straight in, you can see from the top view, it is pushing that filament out the, uh, to the rear there. And I think the same thing's happening with our airflow. And on version 8 here, I attempted to modify that. I made this front wall not nearly as steep, and then I opened up the bottom opening quite a bit. It's just a massive opening now. So we take this same piece of filament and we stick it in there. There's no pushing it to the front or back. It's pretty much a straight shot. So we're going to try that and see how that does. Now we can see here the test from version 7 and version 8. 8 has definitely got considerably better especially on the rear side of the part. We've cleaned up almost everything there. 
there's still a little bit on the front edge and the, the side edges of the part here. Also looking at the top side, the first three levels are much smoother. And we got rid of this big trench here. So we're making progress in the right direction. Okay, comparing version 8 on the left here to version 9 on the right. Literally the only change I made was these fan ducts. I moved up by 2 millimeters. And turns out that was all I needed. We finally did. We have a perfect bowl. So this thing printed flawlessly inside and outside. There's no bubbling or rough edges. Um, we made it. And since we got this figure out on the 4020 fan, I went and re-ran the test with the 4010 Noctua fan. And this part also looks really great. There's uh, some slight lifting on the one edge, but other than that, it looks very good. Now comparing to this red bowl, which is using the yellow printing head, which we started off with, the green bowl still looks better and more smooth all around. So we're officially better off than where we started. But we're not done there just yet. These fan covers I have are extremely restrictive with this honeycomb shape. So I've designed a new valve cover, I mean fan cover, to go over these. That's a lot more open area to let the air flow through. And yeah, they look kind of like valve covers. We got the four spark plug holes here. So those will be a nice addition to tie the whole look together. And now with the new fan covers in place, we're missing just one final touch. That's right, it's a blower. And as mentioned previously, I tested this with 4020 fans, I call that the big block design, and with 4010 fans, I call that the small block design. And really, I prefer the 4010 fans because, let's face it, this printing head is already massive. Here you can see how the size compares with the stock Ender 3 V2 printing head. Here's the size compared with the original printing head that we started with in the beginning of this video. It's a little bit different size there, but actually it's about half the weight with that lightweight extruder. Since this printing head is so wide, I had to modify the X stop switch a little bit just to prevent the fans from interfering, and I lost maybe 5 millimeters on the left side of the build plate. But the right side of the build plate, uh, there's no restriction there. As for Z height, I can go up to 240 millimeters before things start to get questionable with the harness. Okay, and I think that's where I'll end the video for today. I will have some minor tweaks coming in the future. Maybe I'll mess around with this fan. I think it's a little bit too loud for my liking still. And I'd like to get in some ABS and try doing some prints with that. Overall, I'm happy with the Orbiter Extruder and the Dragonfly Hot End, and I'm really happy with the final look of this printing head. It did take a lot of versions and iterations to get there. And if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like or comment down in the description below. I read and reply to all of your comments. And if you have any questions about this design or ideas for further improvements, I'm definitely open ears to hear all of your suggestions. Even though we're on version 9, I don't think this printer has reached its final form yet. So thank you to everybody watching, and we'll see you next time on Desktop Inventions.